You will get the most from any Systems to Win video when you launch it from its video home page. Your Systems to Win standard work templates fill a critical role in the any in process improvement effort because nothing really changes until people actually start doing things the new way and keep doing them the new way even when there's a vacation replacement even when there's a new hire the purpose of a visual work instructions worksheet is to provide thorough training for how to do a job using a combination of detailed written instructions along with optional images and or links to related documents or even training videos A work instruction template is ideal for training a new hire or a vacation replacement, and it's very popular for ISO 9000 documentation. But any given process will usually have several different types of documentation, and your Systems to Win online training will help you choose templates that are probably better for analyzing and improving a process, for auditing the process, and for live instructor-led training. Your work instructions need to be easily accessible to the worker in a known place. Often that means taping the printed report to the wall right there in front of them if it's short. Longer ones you put in clear plastic sleeves and keep them nearby or maybe make them available in PDF format for people who work at a computer. So before you begin we're assuming that you already completed the initial quick start training so that you already know those features that are common to every systems to win template and we're assuming that your leaders have done their job that they've personalized this master template for your company and that they have trained you watching this video should be part of your training but it shouldn't be your only training now as you learn in your quick start training, every Systems to Win Excel template has a help worksheet that's always organized the exact same way, as well as a sample sheet and links to online training and videos like the one you're watching right now. And remember that if any Systems to Win template has any buttons that are unique to that template, they will always appear to the far right side of the Systems to Win menu. And there they are there are the buttons that you'll learn about in this training video. What can be confusing is that this is the only Systems to Win template that is not WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. You need to scroll down to get to the section where you do most of your data entry. And you need to scroll over to the right to get to the section where you enter your header data. And it's not until you have completed everything else that you learned about in this video that as your very last step, you will click this button to generate report, which generates a new worksheet that combines the header data and the data section. And it does all kinds of things that you'll grow to appreciate as we continue with this training video. So let's get started. Like every Systems to Win template, there's a sample worksheet that contains all kinds of useful training, but that's not where you do your work. When you're ready to do your work, you click the button to open a blank sheet. And then on that blank sheet, you scroll over to the header section. Now, hopefully, your leaders have done their job and have already personalized your master template to show only those header rows that you will actually use. But if not, then the first thing you'll want to do is to hide unused rows. So that the only rows that remain visible are the ones that you will actually use. And then if the header cell label doesn't start with an asterisk, you can simply type in your data. And perhaps copy some symbols or icons the same way that you edit shapes in any Excel document. But if the field label starts with an asterisk and when you hover over the cell you see this comment pop up and when you click the cell then this comment comes up 
then all of those things are intended to cause you to notice that there is a formula in that cell. And you're supposed to follow the instructions of those comments and edit that cell on the VC sheet, not on this worksheet. Now there's another short video teaching you about the VC sheet, but the short version is that you enter your data here, and then those shared data fields show up on every worksheet in the workbook. And for reasons explained in our online training, it is extremely common to have multiple sheets per workbook. Now that you've entered your header data, the next step is to observe the process. And you have a choice of several templates with online training for popular ways to do that. Now we're getting to the primary purpose of what you're doing with this template, providing work instructions. The first thing to know is that you can optionally add images in this column, but it is not optional to add written instructions in this column. It's right there in the pop-up help for the header, and we reiterate it right above the column header. Don't leave instructions blank for any row. The other important tip is to use Alt-Enter when you need a paragraph within a cell. So now let's go to our sample sheet. And notice that the sample data reiterates the training we've already covered in this training video. So let's scroll down to step number six, where it suggests that you start by making a skeleton outline of your training with major steps in bold and key points in red. And if we scroll down a little further, notice it suggests that you can use fonts and colors and even shapes to highlight different types of information that are important to your work instructions, perhaps personal protective equipment or hazardous materials, things like that. Now, if your leaders personalized the user-defined training section near the bottom of the help sheet, then on every other sheet in the workbook, you will see this red on pink message that tells you, go look, your leaders are trying to communicate with you. If your instructions get too long to fit in a standard size cell, the first instinct of an experienced Excel user would be to use format row auto fit, and that formats the cell to be the perfect height. And that usually works in most templates. The problem is, is that on this particular template, for some reason, Excel has a glitch that it will mess up your pictures when you go to move or copy them. That's why we give you the instruction, don't use format row auto fit on this particular template. Instead, what you want to do is manually change the row height by simply dragging that line in the margin. Now on the sample sheet of your template, there's a demonstration of how to use another way to handle long text by using a text box. Simply copy a text box that has a clear background, which can be copied either from the top of the page in the favorite shapes or from the Systems to Win menu copy shapes. Then in the Images column, you can either use that text box in place of an image or grouped with an image alongside it, as illustrated here. And then when you click the button to generate report, on the WYSIWYG report you can see how that text box enables you to utilize the white space that might have otherwise been unused. And another way to handle long text is to provide hyperlinks to related documents or training videos that your users can click those active links in your PDF. And if you follow the link in your sample page, it'll teach you how to do that. So once our instructions column has our major steps in bold and our key points in red, the next step is to add our images. So the first thing we do is select a cell in the Steps Images column, and then in the Systems to Win menu, click the Add Image button, and it will ask you if you've already reduced the file size for your desired image, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And then it's up to you to go find the folder that contains the pictures that you took. 
Select the picture that goes along with your written instruction. Click the Insert button, and there you go. Notice that your picture has been automatically sized and positioned to fit perfectly within a normal size image cell on the WYSIWYG finished report, which usually allows two instructions per row, much more space effective. But what if you want a few of those images to be bigger so that people can see more details? Then on the master data entry sheet, not the WYSIWYG report, you select the image, then drag the lower right corner to your desired size, and notice that we do not manually adjust the row heights. We leave those alone. Instead, we click the button to renumber steps and allow the program to automatically adjust row heights to fit the picture. I was able to see thumbnails of my pictures when I went to scroll in the folder that contained my pictures. What if on your computer all you see are these unhelpful file names? In any Windows Explorer or My Computer window, you can use this Views drop-down to choose how you want to view your data. And one of those choices is thumbnails. One thing that we can only help you with a little bit is photography. One common photography mistake is not having enough light on your subject. Another common mistake is to shoot and save your pictures in a huge file size. Pictures used in a job instructions worksheet are small. You can shoot at your digital camera's lowest file size and it will still be huge. Although our software will automatically resize your picture to fit perfectly, the file size of your document will be unnecessarily enormous if you have a few dozen huge pictures embedded into your Excel file. In our online training, we provide several tips for how to reduce image file sizes to keep your Excel file sizes manageable. Now on the sample worksheet, part of the training reminds you that each image cell can have unlimited small shapes for things like arrows and circles and text labels, but it can only have one big picture unless you group shapes to make one big shape. So how do we do that? How do we group shapes? Let's copy this one and move this arrow. Oops, happy mistake. Good time for a teaching moment. The arrow got stuck behind the picture, so let's right-click the picture and send that picture to the back. And then let's use our Select Objects arrow. Or if you skipped our quick start training that taught you how to put that in the quick access toolbar, you'll find it buried here. And then draw a box around all those shapes to select them. Right click your selected shapes. Then select group, group. And now all of those group shapes are treated as one big shape. This is really important. If you forget to group shapes, then when you go to generate a report, you're going to get a permission denied error. So you might want to pause this video and go practice grouping shapes right now so that you seal it into your memory. To move a row, you first highlight the entire row. Hover your mouse over the edge of the highlighted area until it turns into a four-sided cross arrows. Then right click and drag. Then release your right mouse button and choose the Shift Down and Move. To copy a row, you use Shift Down and Copy. But you already knew that if you didn't skip the Quick Start training. That teaches you foundational Excel skills that you'll use not only with every Systems to Win template, but with everything else you do with Excel. To delete a row, it's really important to use your Select Objects arrow to select all the objects in that row and then delete all the shapes in that row before you delete the entire row. And then notice that your step numbers are now wrong until you click the Renumber Steps button, which will automatically renumber your steps. But what if this step isn't supposed to be step 20? What if that's supposed to be additional clarification or an alternative to step 19 and step 21 is supposed to be step 20? What do we do then? We select the cell for step 20 and then in the formula bar we type 
anything that doesn't start with the word step. And then when we click the renumber steps button, it skips that cell. To add a row, you select a cell in the row below where you want to add one. Then click the Add Rows button. Then click OK. And there you go. You have a properly sized new row that has some uh, default data in the instructions column that reminds you of the conventions for uh, using fonts, but you just overwrite that with your own data. Now the other option when we click that same Add Rows button is to select the radio button for a header row for a page break. And that inserts a different kind of row. Very important, do not edit the gray cells on this left side. You need to scroll over to edit this one big long cell that spans the four columns in the area to the right of where you do most of your editing. And then let's look at a generated report to see how a page break header row might look once you've edited it with your colors and fonts and shapes. And notice that blue line means that that's a page break. So in other words, you've got control over how you want to divide your work instructions into logical sections. So once you've edited this master data entry sheet to get everything exactly the way you want it, the very last thing that you will do is click this button to generate the WYSIWYG report. If you select as is, then if you have any hidden rows right now, it will keep those rows hidden and it will deal with any step numbering uh, to deal with those hidden rows. If you choose all rows, then it will print the report showing all rows, including ones that are currently hidden, and it'll deal with step numbering to deal with those hidden rows. Now, if you have product families where you have uh, products that are similar but not identical to each other, then you will really appreciate these last two options, where you can use the drop-down list to choose to generate a report for just one of your items in your product family from the list of codes and descriptions that you defined on the DV worksheet. Or with the click of a single button, you could generate a separate worksheet with correct instructions for every single product in your entire product family. Now, how does that work? Back in 2015, we added a new column and a new button to hide or show rows. If that show rows column is blank, then that means that that process is performed for every product within that product family. If that column has a code or multiple codes, then when you click the hide or show rows button, then when you select a code, then if that column does not contain a match for your selected code, then that row will be hidden and step numbers will be reassigned based on which rows are and are not hidden. And there's the opposite. If that cell starts with exclamation mark not, then that process must be performed for every product except for these. And when you select Generate Report, the same logic applies if you select either of these second two radio buttons to generate reports for individual products within your product family. And there you go. We wish we could say this was a skate in the park, but the truth is that this template's doing an awful lot for you. And soon you will master your new tools and begin to truly appreciate how much farther and faster you can go as you start churning out high-quality, truly useful work instructions.